what McCullough is battling against is Maryland's attempt to protect the people of its state from this corrupt central bank. And, you know, McCullough sues, saying that the bank is constitutional, the state has no right to interfere. They're, they're, they're trying to place a tax on bank notes for banks not chartered in the state of Maryland, which only pertain to the Second Bank of the United States. Are my details on there correct? And can you just talk a little bit about the Supreme Court case? Yeah, absolutely. So this was a famous case that was was emerging. So this is the same McCullough who was embezzling. Um, he himself just basically refused to pay the tax, and that's why it's called McCullough versus Maryland. Basically, Maryland was trying to tax the bank like it had taxed its own state banks and saying that, well, the federal government is not above Maryland. Other states were doing this. The second bank of the United States basically tells the states to go pound salt um, and saying, no, we're not going to pay. And so this court case uh, winds up in the Supreme Court. And then you're getting the lovely John Marshall, inveterate land speculator uh, and former investment partner of Robert Morris, uh, a true crony among cronies. We had to fit um, Robert is, Morris in one more time. I had to fit him in one more time. I can't let him go. Um, and he is deciding uh, that he's ruling on this court case. And you really get the whole cast of characters, Clay and Webster, you know, they're defending the bank. You even get old Luther Martin, uh, who's attacking the bank. He's a great anti-federalist, Maryland anti-federalist. He's one of the few hardcore anti-federalists present at the Constitutional Convention. Uh, Luther Martin, um, though he had joined the Federalist Party simply because he hated Jefferson and Madison, much like Patrick Henry, uh, he had spent his waning years still fighting government, uh, as well as uh, like he was, he was also apparently a notorious alcoholic too. Uh, so he's sort of attacking the bank in the court K in the court. And I assume he just smells like alcohol and all of this and he's inebriated and everything, but he's got the right idea. Uh, he just, <laughs> it's the thought that counts. Um, and you know, maybe he knows how to, uh, he knows how to drown his sorrows knowing, um, which way the government's going to go on this. And so uh, the Supreme Court basically rules that, no, the states cannot tax the bank. The bank is, is, is the federal government. The federal government is above the states. And John Marshall, an individual who owns stock in the bank, he sold it right before the court case. But again, that's still like, <laughs> it's, 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 it, it, it's just, Really, one of those little details you never hear about, but like you're like, oh, okay, maybe that's slight conflict of interest, among many other things. It basically, says, well, the federal government can do whatever it wants. So he used this, I uh, used this case as an opportunity to really flex the broad constructionist, that old Hamiltonian interpretation of the U.S. Constitution. The interpretation that I would say is right, uh, not that I agree with, but I would say is actually what the Constitution was intended to do. If you look at the Constitutional Convention debates and the ratification debates, and you look at what Murray Rothbard wrote in the fifth volume of Conceived in Liberty, and he basically says, yeah, the federal government can do whatever it wants. Uh, it's necessary and proper. It's, 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 it's everything under the sun. Um, and really just the, the, the federal government can't be touched. Um, not only the bank, but just the federal government. The federal government is supreme over the states. And this was really a really big shock to a lot of people because – uh, they had seen some warning signs of some earlier Supreme Court cases, but this is truly people thought that, OK, the anti-federalists were right. The U.S. Constitution is this big government document that basically allows the government to do whatever it wants. And it really kind of shook a lot of people into the state's rights direction. Mm -hmm.